there. Alec Baldwin here with another inappropriate Instagram post. I just wanted to quickly thank you all for the well wishes I've received. People saying how shocked they are that this happened to me and not Stephen. This is clearly a Stephen Baldwin situation. And your beautiful condolences about the loss of my good friend, cinematographer Hannah Montana. She was my friend. She was my friend. We went to dinner once. Unlike that armorer girl who I don't even remember, women over 140 pounds are invisible to me. I literally can't see them. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry, that was my wife, Ilaria. She's from España, born in a little town known as Boston, Massachusetts. Anyway, we all can agree the armor girl should probably be put to death, but that's not up to us. That's up to poor people who don't know how to get out of jury duty. You are listening to the Roberta Glass True Crime Report, putting the true back in true crime. From New York City, Roberta Glass is now on the record. All right. How is everybody? Well, this is one of these days when I am so excited to get going and do a live talk about Alec Baldwin and his history of flip outs and freak outs and everything I've been thinking about since Hannah Gutierrez Reed's trial and before, which is If you saw the thumbnail to this episode, we have another odd Alec Baldwin quote talking about how it would all just blow over if he shot a paparazzi person. And we know that Alec Baldwin has a history of losing his temper, getting physical, violent, with paparazzi, verbal abuse, fans. I mean, it's just like, if you had asked me before this whole thing started, who was on the top of my list of actors who might accidentally shoot someone, I would probably put Alec Baldwin on the top of the list. And that's what makes everything surrounding Helena Hutchins accidental death. I mean, it's been called an accident. So interesting. What was going on in Alec Baldwin's mind? And if you've been following my coverage of this, I don't know if you remember this tweet, from 2017 when he's just wondering what it might feel like to be involved in exactly this kind of accident. And how loose, I mean, how loose are we using the word accident when so much recklessness on his part was involved in negligence all around? So what we know about the situation between before Helena Hutchins was sh- shot on the rust set fatally is that many members of the crew had walked off with many complaints. Their accommodations, they were meant to drive in the wee small hours of the morning an hour to get to the set. And if you don't know anything about movies, they start very, very early, four, four or five in the morning. That's usually the call. So they're asking them to drive at three in the morning 
to a remote location they're not familiar with. I mean, uh, they had real issues with that, real issues with safety was one of their issues, including issues around the pandemic. So what we've heard in Hannah's trial was that was that they were just gonna do the best they could on the day of this fatal accident. The best that they could because they knew they weren't gonna make the day, meaning they weren't gonna get all the shots that were scheduled for that day completed. So today I wanted to look at Alec Baldwin's history of being a hothead and I just can't get enough of the opening clip from Kyle Dunnigan comedian and it really sums up so much <laughs> he titled it alec baldwin's creepy instagram post the link to that video is in the description of this of this episode and it really sums up alec baldwin so well he was doing one inappropriate instagram video after the next after this happened and we know now, if you were listening back to the episode before this about Alec Baldwin, I think it's called Alec Baldwin, the Missing Rust Witness. He was talking to the detective, head detective in this case, and saying, well, I have to give the George Stephanopoulos interview because I know that I'm not getting work. The, his lack of work after this was of premier importance. And he told George Stephanopoulos in that interview he had no guilt. And he talks about how the acts, how the fatal shooting happened in a way that we know it didn't happen. And he tells the detective the same thing. Helena Hutchins was, was guiding me through the movements that caused her death, which was an epic, epic, epic victim blaming. But I want to get to your comments, very brief comments. So Janice Farmer says, Charlie Adelson is much more likable than Alec Baldwin, in my opinion. You might have a point there, Janice. Beatles, 1956, says about Helena, uh, about Helena, excuse me, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. She's a scapegoat for that P.O.S. Baldwin. A lot of people feel that way. And Cassie says, how difficult is it to believe that Hannah Gutierrez and Alec Baldwin are both guilty? Just as Sigfredo and Luis and Katie and Charlie and Donna and Wendy and Harvey are all guilty. It's not an either or, it's end. Yeah, that that wasn't my my hesitation with Hannah's trial. My hesitation really had to do with my intense discomfort with how that investigation was done 40 days after, a lot of time, my total disbelief in a lot of the witnesses, the fact that they had a suspect leading detectives around. I was very uncomfortable just in how it was done in the in uh, in the narrative, so it made me it made it hard to believe the narrative that the prosecutor was putting out. Contradictory witness, a lot of witnesses that I really didn't believe, and I thought to myself, well, a lot. Or, or it was, are we just watching a narrative that was crafted to kind of all dump it on Hannah Gutierrez because? When it comes time for Alec Baldwin, we know he's going to have the fancy fancy lawyers. And money, I think these trials get crazy when Hollywood gets involved or celebrity gets involved. That's what I've seen. But we shall see. Alec Baldwin is his own animal. I have a ton of stuff to show you today, but I'm going to start off with a little bit of reading from People Magazine. And from my own research, they look like they missed a lot of things. 
a lot of things. But <clears throat> let's go through it. So it's called Alec Baldwin, A History of the Actors' Arrests and Other Brushes with the Law. This was written in 2018, by, and it was written by Orly Corn Cornelithos. So Alec Baldwin's arrest last week was far from the first scope with authorities. So I'll talk about that that arrest in a second, because it's very interesting. And his reaction, if anybody can guess, is so typical for Alec Baldwin. If anybody wants to guess, I'll give you one guess. Hold on. I'll give you one guess as to how he, how he dealt with the charges. Uh, Alec Baldwin's, uh, the 60-year-old the actor has a long history of fiery behavior. Boy, that's a euphemism and an understatement. Largely stemming from his contentious relationship with reporters and photographers. Here's a look back at his history. October 1995, Baldwin infamously tussled with a photographer outside of his Woodland Hollywood Hills home when he and then wife Kim Bassinger were bringing home their new baby girl, born baby girl Ireland from the hospital. Baldwin approached the car where freelance photographers Alan Zanger was camped out and sprayed shaving cream all over the windows. A scuffle ensued. Zanger said Baldwin punched him and broke his nose while the actor said big surprise here, he merely slapped the camera out of his hand. At a, in a statement through his publicist at the time, Baldwin disputed the claim that he had seriously injured. So Zanger sued Baldwin for $4,500. Anyone, and he wrote, uh, this is his press release, anyone with a shred of human decency would understand that there are times in your life when you want privacy respected, whether you are a public figure or not, I do believe that bringing your wife and three-day baby home from the hospital is one of those occasions that Mr. Zanger felt it was appropriate to videotape my home and my family for his own profit is unacceptable to me. I asked him repeatedly to stop filming us, and he refused each request. So I've been with my godmother around the paparazzi. Um, my experience with them, although, <laughs> is that they're pretty, that once they get their shot, they're pretty respectful. But I I would say she's at a, a maybe a little different level than Alec Baldwin. Baldwin was booted off in American Airlines. A lot of these celebrities become friends with the paparazzi just because they run into them so much. And they understand that they're just trying to do their job and eat. Alec Baldwin feels like he's in a special category and he can tell people how, if people aren't acting the way he wants them to act, he can kind of play God and his way when he feels like he's not being respected or treated right is often to lash out. That's my take on it. So Alec Baldwin in December of 2011 was booted off an American Airlines flight for refusing to turn off his cell phone after the plane's door was closed for departure. The passenger was extremely rude to the crew, meaning the passenger, Alec Baldwin, calling them inappropriate names and using offensive language. What a shock. The company said in a statement posted on its Facebook page at the time, I love how they call him the passenger, Baldwin tweeted about the incident, revealing he was playing words with friends, a popular word building game on his phone. Flight attendant on American Airlines read me out for playing words with friends while we sat at the gate, not moving. Last flight with American, where retired Catholic school gym teachers from the 50s find jobs as flight attendants. Interesting, like a little anger, anger towards his Catholic upbringing seeping out. 
He later apologized for delaying his fellow passengers in a column published by the Huffington Post, blaming a flight attendant who singled me out. So he always feels singled out. It's not that every celeb A-list celebrity has to deal with this when they have a child. He's singled out. He's singled out on the flight. They don't understand that he has a, a need to play this word game with his friends. June 2012, Daily News photographer Marcus Santos alleged that Baldwin got physical without him outside Manhattan's Marriage License Bureau. On June 19th, he comes after me, starts shoving it and punching me one time right in the chin, he told the newspaper. A rep, a rep for Alec Baldwin refuted the photographer's account, telling people, as Alec and his fiance Hillary Baldwin were leaving City Hall, a civilian walking in front of Alec positioned himself to obstruct the view of a photographer aggressively trying to shoot the couple. The photographer was clearly frustrated, pushed past the bystander and assaulted Alec with his camera. There were no punches thrown and any subsequent, subsequent physical contact with was simply Alec protecting himself. Baldwin later suggested in a tweet that paparazzi should be waterboarded. You know, most celebrities say, well, I get the good tables at restaurants. People treat you very well as a celebrity. This is the payoff. I lose a little bit of my privacy. And in New York, if you've seen the video of Keanu Reeves taking the subway, mostly, excuse me, sorry, Mostly we don't bother our celebrities, but he really has a thing with the paparazzi. Uh, 10 days later, Baldwin got into another confrontation with a different photographer outside of his apartment, this time captured by TMZ. I want you to S the F up. He said, grabbing onto the photographer's arm, leave my neighborhood alone. Did you hear what I said, you little girl? He also seems to have a problem doesn't seem to like women too much. At the time, I mean, that Jim, that Catholic teacher comment to me seemed like it a little bit of woman hating seeping out and a little bit of anger towards his Catholic upbringing seeping out. Baldwin tweeted that reporters were stalking him outside of his home, following him in their car, only to harass and disturb. If that's not a little, <laughs> a little of the kettle calling the pot black, I don't know what is. August 2014. So it goes on and on and on. I mean, all right, all right, I'll go through these. Confronted a photographer who was trailing him and his wife, Hillary, in Manhattan, allegedly pinning the man against a car. Police responded to the scenes. And in November 2013, Baldwin found himself in hot water for using a gay slur during a confrontation with a photographer caught on video by TMZ. He initially denied it, but later conceded on Twitter that he had used an offensive word. So he always denies it. Always denies it. First off, you guess that in the comments, you would have prized. That's what he does every time. Everyone in the group heard wrong. I didn't do it. Or... It was a misunderstanding because the, the flight attendant didn't understand how important that word game was to him and that we were sitting at the gate and whatever, whatever. May 14th, Baldwin was arrested around 1015 in Manhattan for riding his bike the wrong way down Fifth Avenue. This is an interesting one to me. And a New York Police Department spokesperson said Baldwin was informed that he was going the wrong way and was asked to produce ID, but refused, according to Time. He was given two summonses, one for biking the wrong way and one for disorderly conduct. <laughs> Big surprise here, quote, he got belligerent and began arguing with officers. He was taken into custody at the 13th precinct. Baldwin tweeted his side of the story, denouncing the NYPD and the press. Officer Marino 
This is from his tweet, okay? Listen to this. Officer Marino, batch number 23388, arrested me and handcuffed me for going the wrong way on Fifth Avenue, he wrote. Meanwhile, photographers outside my home, once again, terrified my daughter and nearly hit her with a camera. The police did nothing. New York City is a mismanaged carnival of stupidity that is desperate for revenue and anxious to criminalize behavior once thought benign. So the behavior that he's talking about is benign is that he was arguing uh, with it with an officer and, and got belligerent. <laughs> um, the doctor, uh, and again, he's given, he's totally given a pass on this, was granted a conditional part, and then the charges were eventually dropped. Baldwin was arrested in November 2018 after he allegedly punched a man on East 10th Street. So that's really nice neighborhood, very rich neighborhood. Between University Place and Broadway, police said NYU area where NYU University is his alma mater. I, I believe he went to NYU Stella Adler. He transferred there. And I don't know. They never say if he graduated. I, no, he, he got his diploma in 1994. So kudos to him for doing that. He was charged on the 6th Precinct and was later photographed arriving at his Manhattan apartment. Here he is. So, I mean, it's just Baldwin has denied that he punched anyone over a parking spot. So, so then, so this is the, he denied that he punched anyone over a parking lot, a spot, but let's see a little bit more about, this is from 2018. Let's see a news piece. Pretty interesting to go back to all this hotheadness. Baldwin facing charges after a fight over a parking spot in Manhattan. The actor stands accused of hitting another driver. CBS 2's Ali Bauman live now outside Baldwin's home in Greenwich Village with the details. Ali. Well, it happened right here outside the Baldwin's apartment building. Police sources tell us the actor got mad at another driver who slipped into a parking spot he was eyeing. So which is amazing to me that he's fighting for parking spaces as an A-list actor. If you have the money, most people just put it in a garage. They're not seeking out parking spaces. It's one of these giant headaches. Everyone I know who has a car in New York <laughs> is getting tons and tons of tickets, always paying off tickets because you have to move your car. But these are people, working class people, not Alec Baldwin. Mad. In fact, Baldwin got out of the car and followed the guy down the street. Out Anything to say? Alec Baldwin kept his mouth shut and his hands to himself, walking out of the 6th Precinct Friday afternoon, charged with misdemeanor assault and harassment. The 60-year-old actor ignored a flurry of cameras back outside his apartment on 10th Street. Police say a few hours earlier, Baldwin was trying to parallel park outside his building around 1 p.m. when a 49-year-old man from Rockland County driving a Saab station wagon cut behind Baldwin's Cadillac Escalade and pulled in the spot first. Sources tell CBS2 Baldwin yelled at the other driver, then followed him over to a muni meter where the two men pushed each other. Then the driver claims Baldwin hit him on the left side of his face. This woman says she passed by moments before the boiling point and remembers Baldwin seemingly calm. Loading luggage, doing his own thing, minding his own business. There's another example of New Yorkers like, oh, there's Alec Baldwin <laughs> loading luggage, doing his own business, right? Said that's all I saw. The driver was taken to Lenox Hill Hospital. A man who said he's the victim's friend came to pick up the sob hours later after it got a ticket for parking without paying the meter. President Trump, often satirized by Baldwin, offered well wishes to the actor upon learning of his arrest. Right. Okay. 
So that'll give you an idea of that, how that went down. Brooklyn Janet says, love you, Roberta. Though you have examples of Baldwin being angry or arrogant, it doesn't mean he's guilty. Certainly not. They haven't proved it. His pulling the trigger. No, it's not his pulling the trigger. It's his cocking the gun and pulling. It's two motions and pointing the gun. So there's there's three motions that 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 go involved in that accident, cocking the gun. He's pulling trigger wasn't done in anger or intention to harm. May not have been. I'm not saying it was. I'm just saying <laughs> that how do you go from saying, move out of the way, I don't want to point a gun at you day before to not caring. And look how close, close quarters. He's got an anger problem. Do you get to the point where you don't care? You're so frustrated. And this was a shot. It was not needed in that shot to fire the gun at all. There was no practicing practice needed. So was he just sort of like a kid in a candy store playing with a toy gun? But what I'm trying to show here is a, a pattern of rewriting rewriting the episode denying it just as he said i never pulled the trigger and the fbi who did multiple tests on the gun so many tests on the gun that they broke the gun that's your implication no that wasn't i think we <laughs> i think we worked that out brooklyn janet thank you though good point good point Ms. Rex Murphy, welcome aboard. Thanks for becoming a member. Appreciate it. So right after this all happened, this fight over a parking spot where he said nothing happened, Trump's wishing him well. I just have so many clips to show you today. I'm trying to get through all the well, get through all of them. Excuse me. I want to get to the next one. So this is what happened right after it. Please hold. <laughs> Alec Baldwin has accepted a plea deal following his November arrest over a parking dispute, Baldwin pleaded guilty to a charge of second-degree harassment and will enter a short-term anger management program. He had also been facing an attempted assault charge that was dropped. The charges stemmed from an incident with another driver near Baldwin's Greenwich Village home. Actor Alec Baldwin. So that's it. So then he, uh, so he admitted he did it basically pled out but it's the same sort of pattern always denial 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 until he has to until it's absolutely has to and boy that anger management class uh class and i you know just not for nothing but i really enjoy alec baldwin as a performer especially as a comic performer I don't think I don't think there's anyone who can do what he does, which is be a really good, serious actor and a great comic actor. I don't think we have anyone that's quite in his league that way. Certainly not someone who's so regular and so connected to comedy and comic roles that's also really lauded for his serious role. So if you can think of one, let me know in the chat. Maybe there's someone I'm forgetting. But the same thing that happened when his wife got called out and wanted to take a look at him talking. Kevin Nealon did this interview. And thank you to whoever, sorry, who sent me this email. I'm so sorry. I did, um, and suggested I share this interview, some of it. I thought it was really interesting the way he describes himself and his inner workings. Kevin Nealon does a, link is in the description of this video, but does a 
YouTube channel where he goes on hikes with his, I assume people, famous friends, famous people, and pretty, uh, he's done some pretty interesting interviews. I don't know if there's something about the motion of the hiking <laughs> that kind of gets people off guard, but it's called Why Alec Baldwin Can't Run for President. Ah, look at you tracking me down in the middle of nowhere. Okay, let me move forward a little bit into this. But so it's talking of I get tested and uh, I go and get all my blood work done and my doctor like about six months ago he goes, You're in perfect health, everything's great. Because the only thing is he goes, You're the most stressed out person I've ever met. But I don't sleep, I have very bad insomnia. You to me you know, I've known you for a long time. I don't know you that well, but I've known you a long time. I feel like I know you. You do seem like you have a lot inside of you, like stuff you want to do, stuff you want to say, things, you know, you want to fix. Well, you know, I've, I've changed. Yeah. He's changed. He hasn't changed at all. This is like the amazing thing about people. They always feel they changed. <laughs> and I think what I've, what I've noticed about people and myself included is that generally you have the same personality that you're born with and you can change a habit or you can change an MO just because it becomes so painful that you have to change. So you can change in those ways, but your essential nature it seems like you have that since you were a little a little child. I'm essentially the same person in spirit. My interests may be different, but how I react to things and my temperament is pretty much the same from, from when I was a, a little girl. But I love when people say they changed and grown. I'm not the same person. Your criminals say that a lot. I'm not the same person as I was so many years ago. <laughs> you know, I used to say things that I thought were right and fair. And I realized in the age of social media, you could be done. Yeah. Like one slip up, your career's over. I'm surprised you're still uh, <laughs> now, <man. laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Because you had a, uh, you've had a reputation of like just spouting off the things that you feel, you know, without thinking. Well, and... my wife would look at me and she'd be like, I'm not going to listen to me. She's, I do, I do always do my racist accent with my wife. I make my accent with my wife the most racist. She's yeah. like, I like this. So this is really interesting. So he says his accent is racist. And I think that's so interesting because we know now that his wife, Hillary, from a little town called Boston, Massachusetts, <laughs> that Kyle Dunnigan thing, I, it never ceases to make me laugh. It's so spot on, perfect in every, <laughs> in every way. It's truer than a, a real Alec Baldwin Instagram video. And we'll, we'll look at some of those. But it, we know now that she is not Spanish at all. So in that way, it is like maybe putting, it is like some kind of face. I don't know, Spanish face. I don't know. So he knows it, but he, he every time he does his wife, he does her with this accent, which we know is put on. And, and she's still doing this accent to this day, even a little bit, maybe sometimes not at the same degree, but it always came in, it, it, the accent always came and went with the wind, you know? So I, I just don't understand why they didn't just say, hey, guys, it was a fun thing for us. We had fun with it. Sorry if we offended anyone. End of story. But instead, in typical Alec Baldwin style, he's out there insulting people and going after people and saying, consider the source and really getting aggressive about it. I want you to stop. Every time people ask you to give your opinion, doesn't mean you have to give it. <laughs> so for the sake of your children, don't 
do it, I like. <laughs> don't do it. Do you think you have an anger management problem? No, I don't, because to me, what I find is, I mean, I think what I do is I take the bait. So like if guys bug me they know it. with the camera and they're 75 feet away and they're long lens, I never like go rushing across the street. Yeah. It's when the guy almost chips my wife's teeth right. with the lens. Right. But when my wife moves away from me and the guy's like, you know, your wife's on Instagram. So if you saw my last episode on, on all this Alec Baldwin and his history of craziness, I think it's, I can't even remember which episode it is, but I go over the Vermont interview. I go over this altercation he had where he goes after this female reporter and says, you, you almost chipped my wife's tooth. And she says, I do not. He says, I want you to apologize. And at the end of that, that's when we heard the gay slur. Jackie C, thank you so much. Uh, no one believes anyone intended to kill anyone, but Alec Baldwin hired an unqualified armor, armorer, excuse me, who was careless and disorganized, and his movie set was a complete mess. For him to say he has no responsibility or guilt is disgusting. I agree. And they're fighting, you know, Jackie, do you know that he's fighting these, the fine, the OSHA fine? I, I'm hoping I'm not getting that confused and it's not another fine he got for being such a dangerous set. So I'm assuming it's the $150,000 fine. And right after he's saying, he's calling his wife. We went over that, his police interview. And he's saying, hey, it's all paid for. And people were complaining uh, about the pay and he's supporting another strike, but he's not supporting the good conditions of his own workers because he's like, heck no, that would be too expensive. The hypocrisy and the lack of, Self-awareness with Alec Baldwin is amazing, and it makes him very buffoonish. Good points, Jackie C. Agree with you. I just want to know what was going on in his head. And if he's not acting out the scene, if it's not a scene he's acting out that he had to do, that he's practicing for, Then what was he doing? Was he just playing around? Was he just bored? Or was he in a fantasy of shooting someone? Because certainly there's a lot of quotes of him talking about it. It's just, I'm trying to figure it out. Certainly no one's saying this was intentional. But where fantasy and action kind of, you know, you kind of have to go through. My godmother talked about when she was very young, she used to be able to, the way she describes it is put herself through the looking glass. So she's an actress. She said, I would be able to put myself through the looking glass and become another person. And it's, it's, a kind of disassociation from yourself that you do, is that unhealthy? I don't know. Certainly he's a very good actor, great comic actor. I think much better comic actor than serious actor, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm in her underwear all the time. And why would you want to marry if, you know, and he says some ugly slur yeah. against my wife. That guy and I, we, not always, but you know, sometimes I've, made up my own rules and then me and that person we become very intimate very quickly yeah what is it like being in a fist fight i've never been in a fist fight. no i've never been i was you don't have a temper uh, not really i mean i you do don't? i do it for certain things but i i what I, really gets to you i let mine manifest inside so it's eating up my organs and stuff you but, will live forever because you, you get it out but mm -hmm. i mean I, I was hit once in little league in the, in the nose it hurt so badly i thought i never want to be in one of those things again i wasn't even it was a sucker punch That's Listen to Kevin Nealon. You'll live. You'll live forever, Alec Baldwin, because you're you're getting it out at the expense of the of the guy, the paparazzi with a broken nose, <laughs> the, the his daughter being screamed at. So, 
if you follow Gavin De Becker's work, so all that stuff, verbal abuse, tearing, uh, breaking people's property, all that is big red flags to more serious kinds of violent behavior. Wrecking uh, hotel rooms, that kind of thing, physical property. So I love Kevin Neal and it's like, you, you let it all out. <laughs> What a way to keep him talking, Kevin Dillon. Doesn't it hurt? Does it hurt your hand when you hit somebody? I don't remember. Anyway, I had this physical altercation with this guy, and I thought he was going to hit me with a camera. He kind of reared back with this little uh, handheld. Yeah. This was years ago, like this little small video camera he was holding like this. And I thought he was going to hit me with it, so I hit him. But my favorite moment was I'm telling this story, and we were doing The Departed, and Mark Wahlberg looked at me like this very matter of fact. He said, did you knock him out? And I go, no, as a matter of fact, they did. And he seems so disappointed in me. <laughs> one time, one guy's like, you know, uh, my. Barb Newman, Nauman, excuse me, I always do that. Sorry, Barb. Has anyone alone done a deep dive into his childhood? I'm guessing there was significant, that's what I was thinking about too, Barb, a significant abuse or neglect. Right. Because we know narcissism is created by some kind of abandonment, some kind of neglect in childhood. And I was commenting that and this is not to get nothing about Trump as, as politics or anything, just him as a person is very nor is almost like a cartoon of narcissism. And so is Alec Baldwin. And that's what makes him so buffoonish and yet fascinating because both both of them, Trump and Baldwin, don't seem to have a, a sense of themselves. So every, you know, everything they do is wonderful, great. His wife is really Spanish. And that makes it fascinating. That kind of denial creates a little drama. All right, back to this just a little bit. And then I, I have, believe it or not, I have so, so much stuff to show you. We'll get, uh, hopefully we'll get to it all. My wife peels off my ex-wife, Kim, and with, we had a bodyguard driver. He's got Jeff Wells. Yeah. Great guy. He peels off, and the photographer lets them go. He's not going to choose. So he says to me, Alec, what happened here, man? He used to be such a nice guy. He goes, and then he married that fucking bitch. And it was like, yeah, then the whole room just turned like, like a kind of a intense green. Everything turned green, like in a cartoon. It's a really interesting interview. I encourage you guys to check it out. But it, it kind of from his perspective, he's changed and grown and no longer doing this. But two weeks ago, he was screaming at protesters, Palestinian protesters uh, on the street and swearing at them. So I guess maybe he's saying he's changed and that he's not getting physical. But he's still uh, he's still a hot hothead, and you would think that he would be able to use some of that ability to kind of go, you know, kind of dis distance himself, disassociate in his real life that he has to use in his acting to just kind of chill himself out. But it doesn't seem seem like that's the case. Hold on, let me pull this up, guys. Oh, no. Do I not have what I was wanted to show you? Hold on. Hold on, I might have to save this for a part two then. <laughs> oh no. But here's a little of this. I'll show you a little of this. What do you mean? What do you mean? You went to Hollywood. You should have been here for the idea. No, he has the support. Guys and children. You already got your mind made up. You better be a question you got, right? Oh, that's your I'm question. In, I'm in Hollywood. Is that your answer? Is that your answer? You ask stupid questions. Uh, ask me a stupid question. Hold on one second, guys.
Okay. All right. I might take a little break and find what I need, and I will be right back with you. But here he is just losing his cool on a protester's two weeks ago. So what, what are we saying here? And Telegraph is pretty bad about copyright claims. So I'll just show you that little bit of it. Link is in the description. But what are we talking about? I'm going to take a quick break, find what I need. And I will be back with you in 37 seconds. Don't go anywhere. If you are enjoying this episode of My True Crime Report, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share this episode. Get access to exclusive podcasts and other bonus content by becoming a patron today. If you have a question or comment for me, shoot me a super chat and I'll do my best to answer it and read it on air. Thanks so much. Now back to the show. All right, so I found what I needed. And it's just, I just want to download it so that it won't stutter and sputter. My apologies. Let me kick this out from the studio and bring in this. So this channel did an amazing um. collection of all of his, we, there's his Rust interview with Stephanopoulos, which is kind of pretty interesting. And in this, he said, and this is what I found really interesting about this. He said he, if he felt guilt, he would have ended it all. My words, not his. I'm being careful for YouTube. But he said the same thing after the Ireland Baldwin tape leaked where he calls his 12-year-old daughter a rude little pig who's so ungrateful because she didn't call him when she was supposed to. And he's doing, oh, I mean, Kyle Dunnigan is so right on for the right on with these Instagram videos. So here are some of his weird, inappropriate Instagram videos after the fact and having really mostly concern for his career and not a lot of concern for how it's going to feel for Helena Hutchins family. There is a link to the scholarship, AFI scholarship in Helena Hutchins' name in the link video description in this uh, of this episode. If you'd like to donate, but check this out. Encouragement and lots of really, really great um, sentiments from so many people. I got hundreds, hundreds of emails from friends and family and colleagues and people that I, um, some I hadn't heard from in quite a while, to send me uh, uh, strength and uh, good wishes and so forth. And I'm very grateful for that. I want to say thank you to everybody. And online on Instagram, uh, many people commenting um, and saying very, very supportive things about uh, this difficult situation. I the difficult situation. Even if that's true, just keep it to yourself. Your pain is nothing compared to Helena Hutchins' widow. Keep it to yourself. Say nothing. He doesn't know enough to say nothing. It's just so, he doesn't think that this is going to be hurtful. He doesn't know that this is inappropriate. And it's like another inappropriate Instagram. <laughs> another in, 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 inappropriate Instagram. I mean, how many can you do? Wait till we get to the Splenda packet. That's all in here. And the channel, I'm sorry if I'm not remembering it, but it's in the link in the description of this episode that put all this together. And thank you for putting this all together because some of these, I'm not on Instagram very often, 
and they, some of these are pretty inter interesting. Um, the uh, <clears throat> I hope that you're as lucky as I am in one department, and that is your home. That you're home with your family. Uh, I'm home with my family, and uh, um, that's all I've got. He just ended the life of a mother, and he's talking about how it's so great to be with his family. It's really great to be with his family at this difficult, most difficult time. I mean, how, 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 how selfish, how cruelly selfish can you be and self-centered can you be? And it's almost, again, a cartoonish depiction of a narcissistic actor. Spouting off about personal politics that he can't do in his own life. That would be so easy. He's selling this Hamptons house for $17 million. And he's like, oh, we can't put up our, our crew on my dream project that was so devastating that I couldn't finish. Uh, many people, not many, some people suggested that that might rust itself might be, it might have been just a tax write off for him. But how do you get, so he said the same things. He's saying, I, I would have ended my, I, I felt like ending my life after that tape came out. And he said that Kim Bassinger would have been happy had he ended everything, ended it all after the tape of him calling to his 12 year old daughter. And he actually says in that tape, I'm not going to play it because it's too disturbing where he says, I don't care if that you're 12 years old. And it made me think, is he a great comic actor because he does everything absolutely deadpan and to the hilt? And he, does he not understand the comedy of that? I don't care that you're 12 years old, <laughs> that you're 12 years old. And you're, uh, say, and some people might call you a child. He says something like that. Don't, it's not exact words, but that's the gist of it. it and You know, number two, I guess, I guess he'd be up there if we had to guess of something of someone, some actor being involved in something like this. Who would we pick? Alec Baldwin and maybe Mel Gibson and maybe Johnny Depp. Those three. What really matters is my family, my wife and my kids who are so, uh, they my life in every way. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holiday to everybody. And, uh, be safe, wear a mask, get the booster, and uh, don't let Santa Claus down the chimney without a mask. Oh. Oh. How about, how about, I've learned my lesson. Don't point a gun at anything you don't want to destroy. How about that? How about I can't enjoy my time with my family because I'm so racked with guilt? Absolutely. You know, if we had a chart, uh, you know, those kind of, I don't know if I, maybe I'm much older than everyone in the chat, but we used to have these things at fairs where you would just hit them and they'd go up to the top. If you hit them really hard with a hammer, with a mallet, and it would go all the way to the top and ring the bell. So on the inappropriate, I think he's ringing like, I would say a good 94 in that video of inappropriateness and <laughs> inappropriateness and congratulating himself for giving out that good public service message. Because we know that none of these A-list people were living like the plebes had to <laughs> live, really. Seems like so many of them were having parties and not social distancing at all while telling the, the little people how to behave. Um, I was at a coffee shop here on Long Island and uh, having lunch with a friend of mine and uh, 
a young woman, you know, like a senior in high school, or she, maybe she was in college, I couldn't really tell. She walked by with a guy, she was with a guy her age, and he, and she handed me a packet of Splenda. And in, along the perimeter of the package, where there was uh, a, a modest amount of space to write on, she wrote me a note on both sides of the package. And um, it was all, you know, so many people care about you or something. You know what I mean? It was like really very, very kind and very thoughtful and very, just, just really so amazing that she handed me this Splenda packet. And I was like, oh, thank you. And she left and I, she was on her way out when she gave it to me. And I was sitting there and... Uh... Well, this is not the last we hear, hear about the Splenda packet. He actually does an entire other video in his car talking about the Splenda packet that we will hear right after this. And the music was added, I believe, by the creator. But that is, I believe, his house in the Hamptons. It's a gorgeous, absolutely incredible property. I, I took it home and I, I, I was going to photograph it. I was going to screenshot it uh, on both sides. She wrote on both sides of the package. I was going to screenshot it and then I lost it. I had it in one of my pockets. I'm so overwhelmed. I wonder if I put it somewhere to make it safe and I don't remember where. Uh, I searched for it yesterday. <clears throat> Like you. Maybe I just dreamed up this. It was a dream Splenda packet. It was a phantom Splenda packet. It seems to come and go from my pocket because this story never actually really happened. Are people really giving Alec Baldwin Splenda packets with cheery notes on them? Or is he... <laughs> Is he someone who uses Splenda and decide to make this up for sympathy? Just let me let me know. Or was he just telling us all how he would like to be treated? He would like to be getting notes, congratulates, congratulatory notes about how great he is. If I had to guess, I would guess the latter. But who knows for sure? Who knows for sure what goes on in Long Island? <laughs> right? I would search for your keys or your phone or your wallet. I was obsessed with finding this. I'm still obsessed with finding it because I want to screenshot it. I doubt a packet like that's going to last um, very long. But um... He wants to frame the packet. This is not the, the last we're going to hear of the Splenda packet. Uh, if you are the young woman that gave me the Splenda packet at uh, John Pappas uh, the other day, then send me a message here because I'm very grateful to you. That was so lovely. And I, that meant so much to me. It meant a lot to me. Listen, imaginary woman, please come forward. Actually, if, you, if this woman actually exists, I would like to interview the Splenda packet woman. Hit me up. My address is always in the about section, email address. Hit me up. I'd like to interview you. <laughs> I'd like to interview the Splenda woman. Thank you to everybody who's been kind to me. So everybody be kind to Alec Baldwin. He's having a hard time. That's what this is about. Uh, I, don't even, I don't even remember how I came to the house. A, a little, a little, a little. He's bringing up some, some sense memories. So he could can pull up some tears here. So I was like, whoa. The Splenda Packet Story Part 2 that we're going to hear. Alec Baldwin in the puffy coat. This is iconic to all, shout out to all the Pepinos out there <laughs> and everyone following Alec Baldwin and, of course, the Hillary Baldwin uh, saga. But this is, we're going to hear more of the Splenda Packet. We're going to see the Splenda Packet. But the Splenda woman is still MIA. Spoiler alert there. 
let's take a, a listen. But not for nothing. Doesn't Alec Baldwin have the, oh, just a great voice? What a great voice he has. Fantastic. I could listen to that all day. Some people are just born with those kind of great voices. Uh, Alec Baldwin, I would put high up on the list. When I went to my friend's house, my friend David's house this morning, he came out with his daughter, uh, who's dear friends with my daughter, Carmen, and uh, he had a very unusual <laughs> countenance to him. And he and his daughter proceeded to tell me a story that their neighbor who lives two doors down from them went to a store, like a takeout food place, uh, organic crush um, out, out east here and uh, the woman who's their neighbor she found this I can't, I can't. she found the Splenda packet she found the Splenda packet Wait, I'm lost in the story a little. Did his wife find the Splenda packet? Or are we to believe that the Splenda girl found him again and gave back this, or his neighbor found the Splenda packet? I'm so confused about the Splenda thing. And I have watched this video an embarrassing amount of times. So <laughs> my voice, so when I just had the my microphone muted, my boyfriend said to me, oh, don't forget that Alec Baldwin does voiceovers for documentaries. And I said, yeah, you know, I know he's the, the voice of the Metropolitan Opera. By the way, if you guys didn't see my community tab, March 21st, I have jury duty. So no show Thursday, March 21st. I will be down <laughs> unless they kick me out in record time, which I think they will, but I still don't think I'm going to be able to make it from where I live to downtown to the courthouse and back in time and and get ready for a show in time to do it that day. But if we could just, so I said to my boyfriend, if we could just isolate Alec Baldwin's voice from his <laughs> horrible personality, it would be, we'd have something there. And he said, don't worry, AI will do that. He'll, he'll live on in AI. But, you know, we have all those great voices in true crime who do the forensic files and uh, Bill Curtis. And we've had some great voices in, in, true, in the true crime genre who narrate true crime shows. You are 100% true. Thanks for the laughs, good sir. Cheers to a new year. Love you. It's <clears throat> the Splenda Packet. Does this mean 2022 is going to be a good year? Wouldn't that be nice? Um, Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice, Alec Baldwin? It would be nice. Uh, I think that was the year. Was it, or was it 2023 when the charges got, I think the charges got, refiled in 2023 so i think 2022 but who says good sir i think that might be a, a little tell there in in his story seems like something alec baldwin might say suspiciously like something alec baldwin might write good sir all right let's get through this splendid story let me know in the comments how this was if you figured out how this was found i i, I believe it's his neighbor found it anyway that is nothing short of a miracle. I'm going to find out his neighbor's name and I'm going to send her a gift. I mean, can you believe something as silly as this has that much value? I'm putting it in pockets now where I'm like, I'll never lose it again. But then I'm going to send my neighbor a gift, but I can't pay my camera crew well. <laughs> Forget that. The neighbor, you gave me the Splenda packet. I'll send her a very extravagant gift. But the crew, putting them up in decent accommodations and paying them well, 
that's going to cost $180,000. And I, I don't have it. Give me a break, Alec Baldwin. Give me a break. I can't run things well. I can't run things in a safe way. Yeah, Dean Walker is saying this is bizarre. You're so right. Isn't this the most bizarre piece of tape? It's so off. Like his whole his whole Instagram things are really off. Really encourage everybody to, to check out the entire Kyle Dunnigan video. The link is in the description of this video because uh, it's perfection. So delicious and so perfect. Um. That's amazing. That's a miracle. Uh, one other quick note. Any suggestion that I am not complying with requests or orders or demands or search warrants about my phone, that's bullshit. That's a lie. This is a process. Where so now he gets, so he goes from, from being wistful. He tries to wet, bring up some tears. He can't. And then his next thought is about his phone and handing over his phone. And I'm going to shock everyone here, but I agree with Alec Baldwin. He has a right to go through the process through a lawyer before he hands over his phone. However, he does not have, uh, it does not impress me that he's telling the detective that he doesn't need a lawyer and that if he, ha if he had any guilt, he would, he would ha get a lawyer. So a little bit of a contradiction. I've no, I, you know, I don't think it says anything about his guilt either way that he got a lawyer to hand over his phone. Who wants to hand over your phone with all that stuff? I get it. But look at how aggressive he gets about it. So what I'm saying is he's connecting this Splenda story with the Rust investigation. So for me, it, it speaks to the fact that this is probably, if I had to guess, I don't know what ha strange things do happen in life. And certainly it must be very strange to be a celebrity. May weird people encounter and want to have a moment with you. I get it. So maybe this did happen. But that makes me think more the fact that right after this, when he can't well up tears, he goes right to talking about the Rust investigation, right after the Splenda story, that the Splenda story is a made up story. And I would like a forensic on the handwriting on that on that Splenda packet. Or one state makes the request of another state. Someone from another state, from another state, can't come to you and say, "Give me your phone. Give me this. Give me that." They can't do that. They've got to go through the state you live in. That is a process that takes time. They have to specify what exactly they want. You can't just go through your phone and take, you know, your. Uh, your photos or your love letters to your wife or what have you. I, I really don't uh, know. But, <clears throat> but of course, we are 1,000% uh, uh, going to comply with all that. We're, uh, you know, perfectly fine with that. And uh, We're perfectly fine with that. And I would love to hear what's on his phone and his inappropriate messages afterwards. Um I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave it here for today. Actually, we'll watch a little bit more of that, but I'm winding down for today with the end of his Splenda story. I have no worries about that. I have no worries about that. When anyone uh, says that gives me, uh, speaks in the negative, my eyebrow raises. I think he is worried about what's on his phone and I, I'm sure there's something unflattering on his, on his phone. If it's anything like, the communication that we saw with his wife right after in the police interview. And I know that he did not know, but I know that Helena had passed at that moment. Still, he knew she was hella vectored out of there. He knew it was very, very serious. Everyone in the church seemed to know it was serious. And it's also interesting to note that he made no motion towards Helena after it he didn't go up to her you know he said they said he just sat there I find it so I just find this thing so weird that's all gonna work itself out regardless of what they say in these right wing rag sheets and 
people who are all about hate. Oh, MLC, thank you. Solving the mystery. Roberta, who found out? Who found the Splenda packet? Alex friends David and daughter told them that a woman David's neighbor went to Organic Crush store food place and found it. Okay. No, no, and no. And they and they picked up a Splenda packet with writing on it. Come on. I don't believe this. I, I don't know. This is a made up story. You know, when you <laughs> Uh, no. I uh, survey says no, this is not true. Um, thank I'm you. setting aside all the thank you, MLC. Thank you, thank you so much because I did not understand this thing at all. Hate. Setting aside all the January 6th of it all. There it is. I mean, why just do that? You know, why just uh, put inflammatory politics into it? Because he's so sure he's right. And everyone else is wrong. And it doesn't matter that he doesn't live by any of his values. Yeah, I just... just um, like I said, um, I'm very familiar with, this, <laughs> with these Hollywood types. I don't have a lot of good things to say about, about most of the ones that I've encountered. So, sometimes some, some of them are decent, but generally no. Um, that's what I have for today. Believe the trial starts July 9th with, for Alec Baldwin. And if I have anything else to say about it, I'm just, you know, just to clear up my position, I was just not entirely sold on the whole process of Hannah Gutierrez Reed's trial. I wasn't really uncomfortable with how the whole thing came down, the the judge admonishing that defense witness in front of the jury. There's nothing stopping her from saying, hold it, just like we saw in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Hold it, everybody hold it, jury out. Then admonish the defense expert witness if you want. But doing that in front of the jury... Not, we will never know if that changed anything or not. That's just one of many things in that trial I'm uncomfortable with. And I, I'm not 100% convinced she got a fair trial. I know it'll shock everyone, push, knock, knock everyone over with a feather. But that's what I have to say for today. I will be back Wednesday with more true crime content. Please leave me a comment. I really get a lot out of your comments. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Leave me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. And have a great night, everybody. Thanks so much for listening.